So in this video, I want to show you inside the Searchy platform and take you through step-by-step -step setting up a hub that you can use for hosting your online course content. Searchy is really great for different types of audio and video media, and it's got some unique selling points compared to some of the other platforms that I've seen. So I think it's worth having an explore to see whether it could be the right platform for your content. So if you haven't been to Searchy before, you sign up at app.searchy.io. And if you don't yet have an account, you can sign up for free. Um, I have an account, so I'm just gonna go ahead and log in. And it's gonna take me inside my dashboard. And when you log in, it will tell you that you don't have any hubs yet and probably will tell you that you have no recent audience and that's fine. Um, I'm gonna show you exactly what I did in order to set up this digital course hub. But before I do that, let me just talk you through some of the content that's on this, this dashboard. So if we come to the navigation on the left hand side, if we hover over these various icons, we'll see that the first one is our hubs. And that's where we're going to start playing with setting up a portal for you to host your content. Underneath that, we have the library. And I've started to add in some content into this. Um, and there's going to be a little bit of a section at the end of this talking about how you can organize your folders and some of the um, really powerful tools that come with Searchy, including things like using Searchy AI to generate your titles, your descriptions, your tags, and much more. Um, underneath your library, you've got the audience. Um, there's nothing in there right now. I haven't put my audience in, um, but that's where you can also import people and import your CSV files if you're bringing people over from a different platform. And then underneath that, and worth looking at, is the apps. Um, there's some apps that are already installed in, in Searchy and some that you may want to install in order to get the most functionality out of it. So if, for example, you use Dropbox to hold your files, you can import media with this connection. You might want to link it to your Facebook group or your Facebook page. You've got your Google Drive. Um, you've got the record function, and I'll show you some of that as we go through. There's a really great Chrome extension that allows you to record videos that then automatically get brought into Searchy. Stripe is what you will use if you want to use Searchy Payments. Um, and we've also got some video hosting content here and Zoom. You've got widgets and the widgets include the Searchy widget. And this is really powerful because it means that people who are using your platform can find content by searching the transcriptions that are generated automatically by Searchy. So they can come in and if they're looking for specific information, they don't have to go through hundreds of videos. They can literally use a widget to search for something, um, saving them time, effort and finding the right content at the right time. And then here underneath it, we've also got Zapier, which is great because if there's any technology that isn't yet set up as apps, there's a really high probability that you can use Zapier to connect the different uh, types of technology that you're using in your business and have them talk to each other. So those are the main icons, the main functionality on the navigation. Underneath, we've also got this little mortarboard hat um, and that is where your training is. So I signed up to a course called Planet Build It, which takes you through how to prepare your content and then how to put it all together inside of Searchy with a tour of Searchy itself. You've got this help button um, and that's a knowledge base full of materials that are really useful on things like setting up your payment processor, um, but also it's a way of accessing support. And I have to say all of the support that I've accessed through Searchy has been top class and they've got back to me really promptly and been really helpful. You've got notifications here. So any information that you need to know from Searchy will come through here. And then finally, you've got your profile um, and you can set up and personalize that, have your image and so on. So here we are inside of the hub section of Searchy. And what I did was I went ahead and set up a mock-up, a demo of a hub that I could show you now. And then what we can do is we can go through the steps that I took to build that so that you can follow along. Uh, not to say by any means that this is some kind of best practice when it comes to searchy hubs, but I thought it would be useful to have a look at the functionality and to see where some of the limitations are so that you could get a sense of whether searchy could be the right platform for you.
So first of all, let's go have a look at this digital course that I just created. Um, and we can do that first of all by clicking on the dashboard. And when you start with setting up your hub, you'll come to this dashboard and it gives you some getting started options here. And as you can see, I've started to do some of those. Um, and I've also looked at setting up the home page. So if I click on the customize section, this is the home page for the hub, the digital hub that I've just created. And I've just been looking at what I can add, the different sections that you can use. And there's lots of great things in here that I can walk you through step by step so that you can create something that looks similar or you can create something that's totally customized and exactly what you need for your audience. So we want to go and exit out of the editor here and we want to return to the hubs page and as you'll see at the top here, there's a number of templates. In fact, if I click on this button, you'll see the various templates that are offered by Searchy. And some of these are free and come with whatever package that you're on. Some of them you may find are depending on your level. So if you're on the pro plan, for example, you may well get the standard ones. Um, what I'm going to do just so we can get a real sense of what it's capable of is I'm going to start from scratch. I'm going to give my hub a name and I'm going to click on create hub. And that's going to take me into this screen, which is the hub dashboard. And as you saw before, there's these number of sections that we can work through and we can do that now, uh, getting everything set up, ready to do the customization. So let's begin with setting the privacy choosing privacy options. And here we make a choice about whether we want it to be private and we want to have it selected to a certain audience or whether we want it to be public and anyone can access it. So for now, I don't have any audiences set up. I'm just gonna leave it on the private. If we then go on to customize branding, we're now gonna open up the appearance. And this is for your global settings of your Searchy hub. And it's for this particular hub. You can have different branding for each of your hubs, which is great if you have more than one audience. So to change the appearance for this hub, we can work through this list here. Let's begin with the colors. If I click on that, you'll see that it opens up this screen and it tells me that we've got two colors, the primary color and the secondary color. And you can see this color here is represented up here and the secondary color it tells us to use darker tones for that so i've got here a little style tile that's for a demo company course creators and this is their color palette so we can use some of these colors over here to make this reflective of the brand so if i get rid of that and i pull up the little icon here it's a little ink drop icon and here where it allows me to put in the hex color I'm going to go ahead and put in one of the brand colors but I'm going to choose the lighter of the two for this one and it's that sort of green color that's popped up and then for the secondary color I'm going to do the same but I'm going to choose the uh Let's click on the icon again let's keep it up there but this time I'm going to change that to the darker color Okay, and then we have that. And then underneath that, we've got the color theme. And this allows you to choose the background colors of the whole theme of your hub. And the two obvious options are light, which we've got now, or dark, which is this one, or you can customize it. But you might get into some difficulties here of making sure that the contrast is enough. I'm just gonna stick for the purposes of this with the dark color theme. And once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and save the changes. And once that's done, I can click back out and back in to the appearance menu. So the next thing we want to do is change the typography. And again, using that style tile, I'm going to go ahead and pick ones that are reflective of the brand. So our heading font is Abril Fatface and our body font is Lato. And there's a good selection of fonts here. You'll see it um, comes from the Google Fonts page. So if you wanted to go and have a look at the fonts, you can do that to see which ones would fit most closely with your brand. But in our case, we already have our style tile done. We know what our branding is and we can therefore just go ahead and put those in for the heading and the body. The last thing on this page is the content labels. So if we click on that, the edit labels, 
Here it tells you about the labels that appear within the hub. And it's the standard things like the name of files and you've got the singular and the plural. So it might be you have file and files and playlist and playlists, um, attachment and so on. What I might do here is go ahead and change the singular playlist to module and then change the plural to modules because we're creating a course in this, uh, in this example. So I'm going to go ahead and save the changes for that. And then once that's saved, I'm going to go back to the appearance and I'm now going to go to the logos section. Now, what I love about Searchy is the integration that it's got with Canva. So if you're setting up something completely new and you need to create yourself a logo, you can go ahead and link your Canva account here. You can design it in Canva and it automatically embeds that into your hub. But we've already got a logo, so let's go ahead and use the upload function to upload our logo to the hub. So I'm going to click on upload. I'm going to go to the relevant file and I'm going to pick our logo here and upload it. And there we have our logos appeared now in that position. And we also want to do a favicon. So the favicon, if you see, is the little thing that you see at the top when you've got a web page open. And it recommends the favicon size of 64 by 64 pixels. And we've got one of those, so we can just click on upload and click on the favicon. And it gives us that little preview of what our favicon will look like. We do have the option here if we wanted to make the logo bigger, we could do, but let's just leave it about that size for now. And again, we're going to save the changes. And once again, once we've saved, we can go back to the appearance. We can now look at the theme settings and there's some information in here that you can play around with depending on you want what you want. You can have a gallery for your files or a list. Um, you can change how the files display. Um, you can have it so the file previews on hover. Let's try that and switch that on. Um, anything here that you want to change. The last bit is the CSS. Um, that would be useful, but I'm only on the pro plan. And if I just hover over, it tells you that you need the business plan to be able to do the customizable CSS. So that's things like if you want to tweak how things look on the screen. So it would be a useful feature, but on the pro plan, you don't have access to that. So I've made a couple of changes and let's go ahead and save that and go back to the appearance. And then the last thing is the buttons and images and how we want those to display. So let's click on that and we can choose the size of the buttons. Do we want normal or do we want large? I'm going to stick with normal so we can just switch that off. Do you want a border? You can put a border on. I don't want a border, so I'm just going to leave that off. So the corner radius is set to 40. I quite like that. The only thing I might change it to is 20. So it's just got that slightly rounded uh, feel to it rather than being really rounded. You can choose to have drop shadow on. And then the same with your images as well. You can change the corner radius. You can add a border. You can have drop shadow. So these are all for buttons and images that are going to appear across your hub. So once you're happy with the changes that you've made there, you can go ahead and click on save changes. If we come back to the appearance, we've now worked through this entire menu. So let's go ahead and exit the appearance editor and come back to the hub dashboard. And then we can work through the next one, which is adding the content. So if I click on that, it gives us the option to manage the content. And what that will do is it will open up a content section. And this is where we go ahead and add a playlist. And a playlist is going to be the media files that make up your course. So each file within that might be a module or you might have different playlists for different modules. And then each file within it is a lesson. But we're going to keep it quite broad for this one. We're going to imagine that we've just got maybe three or four modules inside of a course. And we're just going to go ahead and we're going to add a playlist. And we're going to create a playlist from scratch. So let's give this playlist a name without the capitals, maybe. And spelling it correctly. <laughs> and you can put a description in here as well. Again, 
we can save that. Now you have the option of adding the content. And if I click on the blue add content button, it opens up this screen. And um, we've got a number of different options. And I wanna talk first of all about one of the great features of Searchy, which is this button down here, which allows you to record your content. So I've just gone ahead and moved over to Chrome because the Chrome record extension only works if you're using the Chrome browser. And I wanted to show you because it really is a great benefit of using the Searchy uh, platform. So you come into your content and as I said, you've got this record button here. If we click on this, it opens up the Chrome Web Store and it allows you to install this extension and add it to your Chrome. So you need to make sure that you're logged in, but then you can go ahead and click on the button that says Add to Chrome. It tells you what it's gonna do and you can just click on Add Extension and it's gone ahead and added that. And you get a couple of notifications here about things that you can do around pinning it. Um, let's just get rid of that one. And if I just click on the little jigsaw icon, which is where my extensions are, I can now pin Searchy so that it always appears in my menu so that any time at all that I wanna click on the Searchy record, I've got that functionality. And the great thing about that is anything that you record through the Chrome extension, the Searchy Chrome extension, that will be added into your library and it is also automatically transcribed and captioned for you. Um, and you can also set the settings so that if you're recording something for a particular group or maybe multiple groups, you can have it using folders to automatically add into that content. So there's a lot of great functionality within that. So let's go ahead and create a recording. And then what we'll do is we'll add that into our content library. So here I am back in the content library and I've got the three options again and I'm going to use the record uh, facility that Searchy offers. One thing just to note is I did find that I had to refresh the page to get the Chrome extension to load properly. Um, what I was doing was still taking me over to wanting to install it. But now when I click on the record here, it gives me the options here for recording and I can record my screen and I can choose whether I want to record the full desktop or just the current current tab. I can decide whether or not I want to have camera recording on, which gives me this option here. Um, I can choose the microphone audio on as well, or I can choose just to have the camera only. And what I'll do is I'm just gonna do a quick recording and then I'm gonna upload this um, so that we've got it and we can play with it in the content library. So I went ahead and did a recording and clicked on start, clicked on stop, and it automatically generates this page, which has got a copy link on it. So if I go ahead now and close that down and we get rid of the Chrome tab, um, what we can do if we just come back to our hub and we can just return to where we were, which was the add content and manage content and we're going to click on the digital course two that we set up. Now, if we go into add content, we can go to our library and we can click on this, which is where it puts all the content that's been recorded from Chrome, the Searchy browser extension. If I click on that, then the video that I just did is up here. It's worth bearing in mind that it can take a while for that to load into your library. Um, so don't be alarmed if you cut, sh shut down your video and then you come in here and it's disappeared. Um, if your video is quite long, it might take a little while to load into the Searchy browser extension, but it does appear. So let's click on that and add selected. And now we've got our first video in our playlist. And it isn't the only way that we can add content. If we want to add a, another file, we can click on it. We can either record our next one using the screen capture software. We can upload if we want to go ahead and upload something from say Dropbox um, or our Google Drive, or we can go into our library and the content that we've already uploaded into there. So if I go to library and I go to our test here, I can go ahead and add this video as well. Um, and that then gives us two files inside of our content library. So what I'm gonna do is come back over here. I'm actually just gonna leave the content. We're gonna come back to that in just a moment. So I'm gonna um, come out of here and I want to go through the last bits of the getting started sections. 
So I'm not gonna do much with these two sections, but I did just wanna show you what some of the functionality is within it. If I click on the set up a custom domain and your domain settings, it allows you to create your own domain name for your hub. Um, and you can also map over a domain onto your hub. So if you'd bought um, a new domain, new URL, and you wanted that to point directly to your hub, you can do that. It has settings for that, allowing you to do it through Cloudflare. And there's information on that in the knowledge library. Uh, if we close that one down and we come into collect payments, you've also got your payment settings and Searchy Payments integrates with Stripe. So you've got two options, one's to allow registration, so people can use can get free access to the hub, or you can use it in combination with the Searchy Payments, collecting those payments through a payment gateway and adding people into your audience that way. And then if we close that down, the last option is the Share Your Hub. And in sharing your hub, you can either give your URL directly to somebody if you wanted to invite them to join. You can create audiences. You can um, add audiences, so upload audiences, either by using um, integrating information or by manually uploading them. Um, but we're not going to do any of that today because it's only a, a dummy hub. So now that we've worked through the getting started section, we can begin to look at customizing some of our pages. And if you remember, we set up a demo version here and let's see if we can create something similar over on our new hub. And we get into the customization by using the customize button. And we've got this blank slate because all we've got so far is the header that we've done a little bit of customization in this getting started section. And we also have a footer down here that we can play around with as well. But if we come back over to our example page here, um, if we want to see the sections that have been created, we can click on this little icon here. And every time we click on a section, it will tell us what we've set up. So we can replicate this by knowing that we need to use a column section. So if I come here and click on add section and we go to the columns section and we put that in and then what we want to do is click on this little paintbrush icon here because I want to change the background to an image that I've got. So we can use the primary color, secondary color, a custom color or an image and I'm going to upload an image here from the course creators content and that should put that in for us. We could, of course, also use Design with Canva and automatically publish it um, if we wanted to do that, but I had this one available, so I can just use that. We can choose on the positioning of it. We can choose to blur it if we want the image blurred. We can then choose how we'd like the text to appear, whether we want it light, dark, or custom. And bearing in mind, this is quite a light image. I'm gonna click on dark. And we've got the option to adjust the padding. And the reason this is quite short and it's high at the moment is I haven't actually added anything yet. So I think for now what we'll do is we can just save it. Once that's saved, we can click back in the column section and that takes us to this. And we've got the two columns, one, two, one, two. And there's different ways that we can edit these in that we can click on the column itself and we can start adding elements or we can click inside of here and look for elements to add. So there's two options. You can either do it in the sidebar or on the actual uh, section itself. Um, so let's just come back for a moment. One other thing that we can do is we can start to rename these because we've obviously got um, column section, which doesn't mean much. So if I come back to here and where we've got column section, if I click on the three dots and click on rename, I can now call that our welcome section and as we start to build up the page we will be able to identify which sections that we're using it makes things a lot easier so click on done so now we want to build out this welcome section um, I want to make it look something like this one that we've already created so if we come to the sections and we click on the welcome section we've got the two columns these two Let's click on the first column and let's add an element and we want to add the headline. It's gonna add this large call to action headline. It's gonna pull through the font that we set up in the appearance. So we've got that, our, head, our header font is already included. And let's just do a welcome space. 
And then because we want to personalize it so that whoever's on the hub, it has their name, we use this little icon here with a drop down menu. If we click on that, it gives us the option of first name, last name, or email. Let's take the first name. It's gonna put mine in because I'm logged in. And then we can come over here and save the changes. And now we've got our first headline. The next thing that we've got is this little paragraph. So I'm just gonna, while I'm here, click on the welcome message, the column, and I'm just gonna steal that. And then I'm gonna come back to the column here. I want to add an element, and this time it's going to be a paragraph. And again, we'll pull through our body font and we can just paste in the, uh, the information that I just copied over and again, click on save changes. And then the last thing that we've got here is a sign up button. That could be a sign up to your mailing list or something like that. So let's pop back over here. Um, everything's saved. Go back to the column, add an element. And this time we want to do a button and there's our click to sign up button. And then depending on what we wanted to target, what we wanted to be the link, we could put that in here. And if we were going to um, have somebody sign up or we wanted them to start with something, you can change the label so that this wording changes. But I'm happy with that for now. And we can click on save changes. So now we've finished that first section, let's go back to our mock-up and look at the second section that we've got here. So if we click on the sections, we've got our welcome message and then underneath that, we've got our welcome video. And again, it's a column section. So it's another two column section, a bit like the one above, but set up slightly differently. So let's see if we can replicate that over on our new hub. So on our new hub, let's return to the sections and we're gonna add a new section, which we can either do here in the sidebar or we can do it by clicking on the blue cross on our, actually on our hub. So we click on add section and we're gonna go down to the layout. In fact, this one we're gonna use is the left sidebar, which gives you this slightly different proportions, a larger media size on the right and a smaller text bar on the left. So that's the one we want to use. So we're gonna add that and we can go ahead and save the changes. And because we're using the dark theme, we get this blue gray background. So we don't have to do anything with that. So now we've got our two columns. We're gonna be adding the text into this one and the video into here. So let's start with the text. We can click on here and it's a headline that we've used. So click on the headline. And this time it comes up in the white font because we're using it on the dark background and we're going to put in it, let's begin by watching the welcome video. And save the changes. So I think this particular piece of text would look better if it was aligned in the center. So we can click on the little paintbrush and choose the alignment center option and save the changes. And then underneath that, um, we've got an image, which is just a curly arrow that I've bought in to give it a little bit of character. So we can click on the plus symbol here. We can add an image and we can either design with Canva or upload. I'm going to upload from a file that I've got, add this in and that puts our arrow there. Let's save the changes. But actually that arrow is a little bit big. So if we click on it and we click on the little um, paintbrush icon again, and we've got an option here with the width where we can either have it default or full, or we can customize it. And I want to customize that and take it down to about 220. Um, and once again, we need it aligned center so that it fits. And then we've got all that set up and we can just do save changes. So we then want to put our welcome video in on the right hand side so we can click on the plus symbol. We can choose a video. We can choose the file. And I've got some files in here that we can use or you can upload something. Um, and I'm gonna put the clean streaks in here. And if we click on that, we've now got the welcome video playing there. So let's save the changes for that. 
And then I think this just looks like it's a little bit high in this particular section. So what I wanna do is I wanna push this down a little bit and I can do that by hovering over it and clicking on the paintbrush. It gives me a margin top option here in the styling. If I just increase that, maybe a little bit more. I think that works, let's save the changes. And then we've got our welcome video section set up. So I'm just gonna go back to the sections tab and I wanna click on this and rename it. And I'm gonna call it the welcome video. And that just helps me to remember which sections um, I'm editing when I need to do that. So then coming back over to the original one after we've got the welcome video, we've then got the course handbook section. So we want to set this up now on our new hub. So we're gonna come in and we want to do a new section. And this time what we're using is a feature section. And it's going to be a link to a URL. Uh, we want to save the changes for that. So now we need to play around with this section quite a bit to get it to look something like this one. So if I come first of all and come to the little paintbrush setting for the section and I click on that and it asks me to change the background and I've got the option of default, primary color, secondary color, custom color or image. This time I'm gonna try the custom color. I'm gonna click on the little icon so that I can change the hex color and we've now got this ice blue background. Now that's obviously not working very well with the white, so what we want to do is change the text to be the dark, and that amends that as well. And also if you notice over on this one, we've got the course handbook on the right hand side. So if we just click on the alignment, that allows us to move the image to the other side. And everything else, I think we can just leave it as it is right now. So let's just save the changes for that. And then what we want to do is we want to come back to the section and we want to put in the URL here. So what it's going to link to. And I've clicked to set up the handbook inside of Dropbox. So I can just copy the Dropbox link and put it in there. And I want to open that in a new tab. So if I'm sending people away from the site, it makes sense to have that open in a new tab so that they don't lose their place inside of the hub. The content here, the headline, so what we got is grab the course handbook. The description here, so we've got the content, download the course handbook so you can follow along with each module. Let's just steal the copy from that, oh, wrong one, this one even, and pop that into there. And then our button, we've got download here. So where it says play, we can change that to download. And then the last little thing we want to do is have the image of the handbook. And I created one of those as a sort of mock-up. So I'm gonna go into an upload and I'm going to choose my handbook mock-up. Taking a while to upload, but it will get there. There we go, we've now got the handbook. So we've done that section and we can click on save changes. And then when we click on this or we click on the download link, that will open the um, URL. It'll open it in Dropbox and that gives people access to the handbook that I set up. So that's the next section that we've done. So let's come back to the sections. Let's click on our rename and let's call that the um, hand book and save that. Okay, so we're getting somewhere. We're starting to have our page coming together. Let's look at the next section that we want to add. 
Um, and this one is a little bit different because it's one of the cards that allows you to have a, um, a menu or some sort of navigation. And I'm using it in this case to give people access to some of the primary things that they might need um, inside of the course. So it could be the support, if they need to open a ticket, it could be contact, if they just wanna get in touch about something, or it could be an access to other resources, but you could have whatever you want and as many as you want in this section. So let's pop back to our new hub and we're gonna do the same again. We can either add the section here or here. We'll just click on the little blue sign. And this time we're gonna choose the grid because we want to use some cards. So let's click this. And then what we want to do, you can either use an existing playlist, you could put in the recently watched, so the um, different media files that somebody's been using. But for this one, I'm gonna do the custom and create custom cards. And you'll see that it starts to put this grid section in. So this grid section, um, we want it with the dark background, so that's fine how it is. Um, we can have a headline. It says grid section at the moment. We can take that out if we didn't want it. I'm gonna keep it and put resources. Um, that won't appear until I start to put in the, um, the custom card. So I'm now going to add a card and I'm gonna be linking these to a URL. So I'm gonna click on that. And at the moment, it just puts one great big card in. I'm gonna edit this, and then what I'm gonna do is use the duplicate function to create some extra ones as well. So what we might wanna do is put in a headline here. So I think the first one that we had was support. So let's put that in, and let's save the changes. And then what I want to do is I want to create a background for this card. So I just use the little uh, paintbrush icon. And when it opens up into the background, I'm going to change it from primary color. And I'm going to actually choose to do an image. And just for the purposes of showing you the Canva integration, um, instead of uploading an image, I'm going to click on the design with Canva. And you need to be signed in for this to open automatically. It will prompt you to log into your Canva account if you haven't already. And now you've got these thumbnails um, already uh, here that you can use and you can redesign. So if we scroll through, um, let's have a look for the one that we were using before. It's this one here, the this is green one. So now we can just do some edits to this. So um, if we go back and have a look, we've just got our image here, the color here, and we just got that title that appears automatically through Searchy. So let's start first of all with like clicking on the image. We're gonna delete the image. And then what I wanna do is I wanna open up my logo content and I'm gonna pull this in and have this as our thumbnail image. And then we've not got any writing, we don't need any writing, so we can just delete that. But then what we wanna do is we want to change the color of this. So let's um, put in a new one. One of the colors, we're going for the pale red color. We can put that in like that. And then all we can do is simply click on publish and it goes ahead and puts that in for us automatically, which saves us a whole heap of time of having to download it, get the PNG file, upload that. So we can just go ahead and save the changes. And then if we come back to the card and back to the grid section, now what we can do is we've already got one, we can go ahead and we can duplicate that. So we can use the three little dots here. We can click on it and duplicate it. Um, so I'm going to change the name of this one because it's going to be the contact section. And I'm going to change the name of this one, which was the support. And I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to click on it and duplicate it again. And this was the resources one. And what I really like about this, if I now click on this contact one and I click on the little paintbrush and I go to design with Canva. Now it opens this again for me, this design. I can click on this and I can just go ahead and change it to one of the other colors. 
give that a moment, save the changes. And then last but no means least, I wanna, oh, didn't wanna click on that yet. I wanna go back to the contact, back to the good section, go to the resources. And I want to click on the little paintbrush and I want to change design with Canva. And now I'm gonna click again, but I'm gonna choose the orangey color that's part of this, the photo colors and publish that. And there we go. Isn't that a really easy way to have our three icons done? And then the only thing with this text is it, it's fine where it is. Um, I need to go back again. Um, but I, I would actually like it, I think, if it was over on the other side. So what I'm going to do for each one is I'm going to go back. Let's start with the support one so I know which one I'm doing. Let's um, leave that as support. But let's click on the little paintbrush icon. And I'm going to align that to the right. Save changes. I'm going to come back again to the grid section. I'm going to click on the contact one. I want to change the name of that one to contact. Click on the little paintbrush. Align the text again. Save changes. And then by no means least, I want to come back one more time to the resources one. And I want to change the name of that. Click on the little paintbrush. And I want to change the alignment of that as well and save changes. And now I've got my next section set up looking like that. So I set these all up as URLs. So these might be pages that are hosted on your website. So the one thing you would need to do is to, once you've set them up is to go through and then on each one, you want to set up so the link actually works, as I demonstrated there. You just put your URL in for each one there. Um, and again, you probably want that if it's off your site to, um, to go open in a new tab. But then once you've done that, you've now got your resources section set up. And that means that we can come down to set up the next section of the hub. Going back to the original one, what we had here was a start the course section. And this was a way for people to link to the course content, the playlist, and get started with the actual content. So if we come back to our hub, we need to add in a new section here. And it's going to be a new feature section. And this time we're going to be linking to a playlist, which is going to be the content that we set up earlier. So I'm going to put the playlist in and we can go ahead and we can choose the playlist. And we've got our digital course two set up. Let's click that and click on add selected. Um, so we're going to save the changes, but there's quite a bit of uh, changes that we want to make to this. So it looks something like this. And we could start by changing the background of the section because otherwise the two dark blue colors run into each other. So let's start by clicking over here on the paintbrush and we're going to change the background and we're going to do it to a custom color. Click on this and we're going to use one of our brand colors. There we go, it's that creamy color. And because it's going to be um, a sort of lighter background, we probably want to have a dark text theme. And um, we can save that for now. Um, if we have a look over here, this content's a little bit further over. Let's start by changing the image because then we'll get a sense of where that's going to play in. So this is our playlist um, and the digital course, and that will open for us. If we go back to the home page and we scroll down to here. What we wanna do is click on the little settings icon and we've got the playlist linked here. We've got the name of it, so we're calling it here, start the course. And the content, we've put click the button below to start. Okay, and then the play, we're gonna change that to get started. And then what I love about this is we can also change this to a thumbnail. So it can just be the default, which will be the videos that you've got in there, or you can change it to a custom. And again, we can upload something. And I just created one that looks like the course itself. 
So you'll notice on the original one that we've got this little bit of information. It's some metadata about the number of media and how long the course is. So if you wanted that to display on our new hub page, it's within the feature section. If we come down, it'll give us the playlist progress, you, the, the theme menu here. If we click on that, and we've got some options here, so you can display the duration of a file under file titles and playlist meta. You can display the playlist duration and file under the title. So we've got that there. Let's save the changes and you'll see that it's now appeared here as well. So I think we're pretty much there. We've got the about section still to do. So let's just go ahead and add that as the last piece of content and then just the footer to do on our new hub page. So once again, we're going to jump into here. We're going to click on the plus and this one, let's just have a look and see. It's um, Let's go to the sections. Our about section is a column section and it looks like it's one of the ones that has a larger column to the side of it. So if we come here, we want the sidebar and we're having a smaller um, sidebar on the right hand side. So we can go ahead and add that and let's just save our changes. And then we've now got our two columns. And what we'll do, I think we forgot this on the last one, is um, for this feature section, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to rename that one. And that is the course content. I'm going to rename this one as the resources section. And then find this new one that I've just added, I'm gonna rename as the about section. Okay. And we've got this, um, the dark background again, which in this example is what we want. So now we want to do, um, click onto the about section. We've got our two columns, click on our column and we want to add the element. And the first one is a headline. And we're just gonna put about, we've just got about there. Let's just leave it as that about and save changes. And then if we go back to the column, we want to add the paragraph underneath. And I think we've just left that as the dummy text for this one. So we'll save the changes. And then we've got a get in touch button. So if we just stay in that and we've got the button here. So let's just do the same here, back to the column, add an element, add a button. And we've just put get in touch on that one. And that URL there would be a link potentially to your contact form. Again, if it's off your site, you probably want to do it as opening a new tab and then we'll save the changes. And then over on this side, we're going to add an image. And we're going to upload and we've got this image here. Let that one upload. And we can save the changes and then we could put our about text in here. And that's it apart from the footer. So the footer, as we said, is already uh, here. It's already put into it. Even if you start with a blank canvas, you'll have the footer. If you click on to the little settings icon here, the little gear icon, it gives you an option to turn off the searchy logo. Now you might want to do this if you want to have a site that doesn't show which platform you're hosting on it. However, if you when you sign up to Searchy, you automatically qualify as an affiliate. So if you want to have it so that if people want to replicate what you're doing, you can leave that switched on. And if people click on that, it will add to your affiliate clicks. And if someone buys through that click, then you get a small percentage of their fee for that. So it's probably worth having it on. In terms of your footer text, you might want to put something in here. Um, I usually put in a copyright notification. So if we go into um, our symbols, find the right one. And we'll just put in copyright course creators 2023. Get rid of that now and save the changes. And the other thing that you've got an option to do here is to put in a footer menu and you would click on that to add a menu item and say you wanted to use a URL to link to your website. And you could put in your website here 
And again, you could put this in as a new tab and whatever the URL is, save changes. And then you've got a clickable link here, which would take people to the main website um, as well. And that's pretty much it. That's your homepage created. Um, there's so much more that you can do with it. There's things like you do have the option, for example, if this section here, which you've set up as a feature one, if we go to the sections, and we go to the handbook download section, you've got the option to change that into a carousel. So maybe you had the handbook, maybe you had something else that you wanted them to download. You can change that into a carousel so it slides across um, and shows people different content that they can uh, make their way through. Um, but that's it, the sections are all done. Um, we've named them and we've got our home page created. So let's go and look at some of the other pages that you're going to want to set up as part of your new look hub. So having now customized our home page, let's take a look at some of the other pages that you have within the searchy hub. So first of all, it's worth noting that in addition to your home pages, you can add other pages as well. So you aren't restricted to just having one main library page. You could construct those in whatever way you wanted to, to separate things out into, say, modules or different aspects of a course and so on. There's quite a lot that you can do there. Um, but in addition to the custom page, the home page, you've also got some default pages. And these are one of the, some of the ones that have to be set up in order for the hub to work correctly. Um, lots of them are set up with default elements and there's some customization that you can do to the various pages as well to give them the look and the feel of your hub. So we'll just work through these each in turn so you can take a look at those. Um, so the first one is the search results. And the really big thing that um, Searchy is good at is this search facility that allows you to search all the media files that you have access to. Your user can search on any level from the course title, the file title, right down to things that are included in the automatic transcript. So the search facility is a great way for somebody to find information on something that they're looking for. And you've got here this setup with this header that you've set up as part of your global um, default and you've also got the footer that we've just set up as part of the home page and this search result so it uses a default section that's not customizable. If we click on the little gear icon um, we can um, turn the settings on to have title matches and as you can see the keyword matches and the chapter matches say that they're coming soon. If we go back and we go to the playlist this is the course content that we have. So this um, will be things like your modules or your lessons. Um, and when you click on a course to start going through it, it will open this particular page. And again, you've got the standard header and the standard footer. And then you've got the playlist grid that is automatically added. Um, and if we click on the little gear icon for that, you can have audience settings turned on and you can do the playlist progress so they can see how much of a playlist they have watched. I don't have an audience set up, so I can't do anything with that right now. And then if we go back, we've now got the media and the media is the individual lesson and how that displays and the files that you have. So you've got your header, you've got the files and the footer. And if those ones are going to be the same, if I click on the files, you can either have a gallery or you can have it as a list format, depending on how many different files you have in there. You might have um, a, you might have one or two media files um, and you might also have an attachment in here that I haven't done yet. If we come out of that and we go into the login page, this is automatically created for you um, and you can see the right section, which is the sign in that is pulled through from your global settings and can't be changed. And then the left section, if we click on that, we can actually upload a different logo or design with Canva. So if I click on that and we pick the this logo and open that and we can also make it bigger um, and we could add that in there. But in actual fact, I probably want to change the background. Let's change that to a custom color. Um, I'm just going to go white for now so you can see it. 
and then we can save the changes. So you can change the colors, you could put an image in here, you can change your logo. So there's a little bit of customization that you can do to your login, but it mainly pulls through the global default colors anyway. So once you've set those up, it will reflect your, your brand. If we come back out now to the registration page, and this is where people are gonna sign up and they're going to add in their account details. And um, once we've got that all set up for registration, which it's not done, and you can see it's the same setup as the login page. So a little bit of customization that you can do over here on the left-hand side. We've got account settings. Um, so you can, um, again, header and footer, but then the account settings are pretty standard. We've got the payment. And we haven't done the prices yet, but you can customize this to add a logo. And on the right hand side, you'll be able to set up your payment settings here, which I haven't done as yet, but that's where you would add in those. And then the final page that you've got in your default pages is the onboarding. And this is where people, once they've registered, would set up their profile setup and their password setup as well. So again, you can see once you've set up your global defaults, it's gonna brand pretty close to the homepage that we've just created. So in this section, I wanted to talk a little bit about the content that's contained within Searchy and some of the flexibility you've got around organizing it and structuring it into folders and playlists. And um, before I did that, I just wanted to take a look at the playlist that we've already set up um, and to show you that, um, I'll have to use this one because this one's not got any words um, in it, but if I click on this video now um, and then I press play and if I, take the sound down. Um, if we click on the captions here, you can see that we have the captions that are already built in. There was nothing that I needed to do for that apart from upload the video. Search, you did all the hard work of transcribing it for me. So we'll stop that for a moment. And then what we'll do is we'll exit out of the editor and we wanna come back to our hubs um, dashboard. And we're going to have a look now at the icon underneath it, which is the library, which is where all of our content is stored and managed. So if I click on that little icon now, you'll see the different media that we've been playing with and uploading. And we've currently set it up into three different folders here. And what's good about that is it means that if I click on to the test one and I have a video that's in the test, but perhaps I wanted it in getting started, I can click on the three dots and I can move to a folder and I could choose the getting started folder and then that has been moved. Um, and likewise, I can now um, move it back again. And there we go. Now if I go to my test, it's back there again. So you can put your content in and then restructure it and reorganize it as you want. And the Searchy browser extension is where anything that you record through the Chrome extension is put into here. Um, but again, if you then, once you have it, you can always um, move it into a different folder um, if that makes more sense to store it there. So if you wanted to add a new folder, it's a really simple system. You've got the create folder button here. You click on that, you give it a name, and then you have your new folder, and then you can begin to add or move content into that. And the other thing that's really good here is you have some playlists, and these are separate to the hub playlist, the individual hubs, but you can create a playlist, and let's give that one a name. And what we can do is we can now add the content from the library. So let's go and get the, let's get that one and add that. And let's also go and add another one from the library. Let's use the, that one as well. Um, and now we've got a playlist with two sections in it. And that means anywhere that we wanted to link to it across the searchy site, so in our different hubs, we can do that. We can put in a link. Now, what I really love about this is the automation feature. So if I click on the settings icon, the little gear icon, first of all, you can change the thumbnail so you can have a playlist thumbnail for wherever it appears. But this second one is something that I think is really quite special for platforms. If you click on the automation, what you can decide is that if you add a folder, so let's say the digital course, and we put this into the automations, 
any files that are added into that folder will automatically be added to the digital course list. So that means if you're creating a content and you're sharing it across different hubs, or if you just want to automate the whole process to make your life easy, if you're generating a lot of content, you can automate it either through adding content to folders or by adding content via tags. And it will automatically do that. You don't have to go in and add it to each one of the playlists individually, which I think is a pretty great feature. So if we save that and then come back to the settings for the playlist, we've also got some options around the privacy here. So if I click on privacy, you'll see you can decide who can access your content and where. So you can decide whether it's just you, whether you want it um, unlisted so you can just share the, the link to the playlist and anyone can see it or you can embed it on a specific domain. So that's really good if you want to host your content on side of Searchy, but perhaps add that playlist to your website, but only have it so that it can be viewed on your website, which is good for protection and security. You've also got some options here around the download privacy. So are you allowing people to download video, the audio, the transcription? Perhaps you want it that they have to watch the video on your website or on Searchy, but they can download a transcription to take away. And you've also got the option here about whether to have the share button on it and some more options here around your player settings. So if we come back out of that, I want to take a bit more of a look at the transcriptions service. As I said, that's automated. So every time you create a video or you upload a video to Searchy, it's automatically transcribed, which gives you the option of then displaying captions on your video, which is a really strong feature of the platform. So if we go into one of the video files, I'll open up my folders. And then if we have a look at the test, I'm going to use this one because I know this one hasn't got any words in it. So there'll only be a transcript for this one. I can click on that. And if you come to the menu here, you'll see there's a little icon for edit transcript. And if we click on that, it opens up the transcript that was automatically generated when I uploaded the file to Searchy. And what's good about this is you can go through and you can edit the transcript. Perhaps there's a word it's picked out that isn't, isn't right, so you can correct that. And there's a couple of other options down here where you can download the transcript, which is great because you might want to use that to create a blog post on your website or you can also upload a different captions file. So if you have a different service that you want to use and you have a file for the transcript, you can just automatically upload that. So then coming out of this, I want to show you one of the newest features of Searchy. And I think it really sets it apart as a platform because they have a new service called Searchy AI. And if we scroll down in this list, Searchy AI is here. And when we click on it, it starts to generate AI suggestions. So I pause the video for a minute just to allow that to run. It takes a few minutes and this is a relatively short video. So it might take a little bit longer if you had a, a longer video. But what's great about Searchy AI is it starts to come up with content for your video. So for example, it will come up with a suggested title, a description that you might want to use for the video, the chapters that are included in it, the long summary and some key takeaways. And the key takeaways are great for little sound bites that you might want to use on social media. And if I just close this down here, it also comes up with some content tags that it's picked out. And for somebody who generates a lot of content, this would be a great time saver in that you're not having to create the video and then go through and pull out all your descriptors in order to post it, whether that's on Searchy or whether that's um, on your social media or on your website and so on. And you can do a few things here. So if you get a title, we've got exploring colors with Adobe Color. If you don't like that title, what we can do is generate, use this blue button here to generate a suggestion perfect color com combinations with Adobe Color. And you can also see the other ones that it's suggested. Once you've found the one that you think's a fit, I'm gonna choose the Exploring Colors. If you click on Replace Title, it now renames the uh, video with the title that you've chosen from the Searchy AI. And you can click back into this to then go through. Let's now do the description. Let's say we're happy with that. We can now replace the description. And once again, if we go back in, I'm gonna nip down to the content tags. Um, I think we might generate some more. And we've got a few here, and then we can just click on the ones that we want to 
add to the video. So that would be a really great time saver. Um, in some ways, replace perhaps the role that you'd have a VA doing because this will generate automatically and you can still go through. Once you've done it all, you can close it. And if you wanted to, you could then go in and add some more content tags. So that's a really great feature of the Search E platform. So now that you have your content set up and organized in the way that you want, the last thing to do in terms of the setup is the email notifications and the audience settings. So let's just take a look at those. I haven't explored these in complete depth yet, but I've done enough to just get an overview and there's great resources inside the knowledge library on how to set these up. So let's just come out of this and let's go back to our hubs and open up the dashboard again. And you'll see that there's two little boxes here, the audience and the settings that we haven't yet looked at. So let's begin by looking at the settings. And here we've done a little bit around the privacy, we've done a little bit around the domain, and we've looked at the payment and registration. Um, and you can go into more depth with that and look at getting that all set up. But let's talk a little bit here about the emails and the email configuration. So your emails you will want to have are messages that are sent to welcome people to your hub and for things like password reset and any achievement notifications. And those are sent through the Searchy platform. And you can do the email configuration so that you can set it up to send from your email account using SMTP. And if you want to do something more than that, say perhaps you wanted to do some email marketing linked to your searchy, you have got the Zapier uh, app configuration that you can link to your email marketing platform. So I've had a look and some of the main players like MailChimp and ActiveCampaign and ConvertKit all will link through Zapier. But I have seen just from my sort of initial exploration that there's not a completely in-depth way of creating zaps between the two. So you can do certain things around your audience and your lists and tagging, uh, but it looks like that's in development and there's more to come on that. But you probably want to set up the email configuration so that messages that come from your Searchy Hub appear as though they're coming from your email account. Underneath it, you've got additional pages, and this is probably worth just taking a look at. You can have an audience directory page. So if you want people to be able to find each other and to see each other's profiles, you would just slide that button on, and then you uh, that audience directory page will appear in your other pages, where we were looking at things like the login page and the onboarding page before. And then finally, we've got this button around engagement, which is the achievements. And you can set up achievements for your audience when they complete certain tasks or objectives inside of Searchy. So if they complete a course, for example, or perhaps they watch their first video, you can give them a little reward, a little badge to recognize that they've completed that. And you've also got some optimization settings down here, which I haven't yet looked at, but it says that it does some tracking and you've got some extra SEO settings for making your site uh, findable on things like Google and so on. So they're worth having a look at. And then if we come back to the dashboard, having done all of your settings, the last thing that you'd want to do is to go in and start managing your audience. And there's a number of ways that you might be bringing people into your Searchy dashboard. So you could be having a registration button, a free registration button that you share with people and they can sign up. You might have a payment button. So going through Searchy payments, which adds them to the system. So they sign up for, say, a course or they sign up for a membership. And if you wanted to add people manually, you've got a couple of options as well. You can either add people one by one. So if you were, say, sharing it as a freebie for maybe a coaching client, then you can come into the audience and there's a little blue plus button here that allows you to add a person. And you can also import your audience. And it tells you here that you can use a CSV file, so a type of spreadsheet. And that's great if you're moving your audience over from an existing platform and you've got a lot of people that you want to bulk import into Searchy, then you've got that option as well. So having set everything up, there's one more thing that I would recommend doing before you launch. If we come back to our hubs and we open our course, and we go into the customization again.
and this takes us back to our home page. I'm just going to have the sections open. There's a couple of features on here that you would want to check before you go ahead and do the launch. So um, if we come up here, there's a preview button. And if we preview it, it gives us a chance to look at our page and we can check that everything displays the way we want to and once we've done our links so we've put the video in here and this link should now work because we've linked that to a dropbox folder and there we go it opens it up and um, we haven't done anything with the links on there yet but we've also got the course we can click on the get started and that's all working fine so you can go through and you can check that all of your content is set up and is actually working the way you want it to if i just close this down there's one other button that is worth taking a look at and this is this little mobile preview button that opens this screen and this is how our page will look on a mobile device and if we go through what we might find is that some of the content doesn't work for mobile for example we've got this arrow here that on the main page pointed to the video but now it's pointing to nothing so it doesn't really make sense but what we've got is if we go into the settings and we click on the little paintbrush up here and we scroll down to device visibility, we can decide which devices and elements should be displayed. So all is both mobile and desktop. That one is a little icon for mobile and this one is a little icon for desktop. So that arrow doesn't really make any sense on mobile. So let's only display it on the desktop and then we can save the changes. And as you can see, that's now disappeared from the mobile view. And we can edit our page to make sure that it displays just as well on mobile as it does on desktop. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you have found it useful and it's given you an insight into how you can get started with Searchy I.O. If you've appreciated this video and you'd like to help out, then there is an affiliate link and I get a small commission if you sign up via that link. Alternatively, if you want to, you can just go to app.searchy.io to sign up for your free trial. However you decide to create and share your content, I wish you every success. Happy creating.